Thanks for being back with us on What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. Joining us now is Elizabeth Vargas, the new host of America's Most Wanted. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us. Nice to be with you, Lauren. You have been, a lot of our viewers will know your face, familiar with you. You've been a journalist um, for decades. You've been with ABC News for 22 years. So what drew you now to this project? You know, I've been reporting on true crime for so many years. As the host of 2020 for 15 years, we did a lot of true crime. Um, and I would say that interviewing the victims in these stories was always, hands down, the most gut-wrenching part of the job. And this is the one show in this sort of true crime space that uh, is different in a very big way. It offers viewers the chance to rewrite the ending of the story, to help bring justice and resolution to the victims of these crimes. And I just jumped at the opportunity. It's an iconic show that helped catch nearly 1,200 fugitives when it was on the air the first time. And now that we're back with all the new technology uh, and the capacity to catch even more fugitives, it was just something I couldn't resist. Let's start with the interviews. You mentioned speaking with family members, um, people who have lost loved ones. And this is something, you know, nothing new to you as an anchor and investigative reporter, but just how difficult is it to talk to people about the absolute worst part of their life? It's gut-wrenching, you know. Um, I, I don't think there's ever a, a time when I've interviewed the victims of the crimes when I haven't, you know, had to really collect myself because it's so emotional and so difficult. Um, but they're the real, you know, a lot of the focus is always on the fugitive, but I never lose sight of the fact that it's the victims of the crime that motivated me to do what I'm doing. And I think will motivate our audience to to uh, want to keep an eye out and find justice. Um, it's It's, you know, and we have for each show victims of the crimes in the studio with me. Um, that was one of the things I really insisted on because I want to keep the focus on them. And I think that will spur our audience to want to help as well. Um, it's a very powerful part of the show and they're front and center in the way we tell the stories. America's Most Wanted was first on the air 33 years ago. Of course, the iconic host at that time, John Walsh, who had lost a child uh, to murder. Did you talk to him before accepting this role? Was he always in the back of your mind? I, so, I talked to him just a few days ago, actually. Um, and I had interviewed him several times while I hosted Good Morning America when he was on for some other uh, capture, for example, that they had done on America's Most Wanted. So I knew, I've knew i known John for years. And yes, I, I spoke with him after uh, accepting the show, um, the, the job as host of the show. Um, just to, you know, he was lovely. He congratulated me, told me how happy he was that the show was coming back, how happy he was that I was hosting it. And it's, you know, I, listen, he's, he's iconic. Um, I'm thrilled and honored to pick up the torch. And um, it's, it's, a real, it's a real honor to follow in his footsteps. You mentioned technology. This new iteration involves a lot of differences. Social media as well plays a big role. What can viewers expect on Monday nights when they sit down and watch? Well, we have so much technology. I mean, the explosion in technology since the, the show went off the air nearly 10 years ago is astonishing, starting with the fact that everybody walks around with an HD camera in their pocket and the ability to call us to go online and quickly look up on our website somebody's picture or the video of the avatar. Um, speaking of avatars, in the studio we have these 3D avatars which age progression technology shows us what this fugitive might look like today, most likely looks like today. And I can walk around them and point out tattoos and scars and deformities or in one case one fugitive had part of his thumb shot off. I mean these are the kinds of things that even if they radically change their appearance they can't change that. So um, it really helps us bring, bring it to light. They're not looking just at an old mug shot from however many years ago. They're looking at an avatar uh, with age progression technology of, of how that person might look like today standing next to me. So you can see, you know, in the case of one fugitive, he was very tall. Another fugitive was a woman who was only four foot 11. So it really helps the viewers better uh, visualize what these people might look like today. And leaning on prosecutors and police experts as well, that also brings everything together, doesn't it? Yes, we have a, you know, FBI and the U.S. Marshals working closely with us, um, as well as monitoring all the tips coming into our phone banks. So 
Uh, we work closely with these services. These, these are de dedicated marshals and FBI agents and local police detectives, some of whom have been working for decades to chase down fugitives that you know, have been on the run for a long, long time after committing very serious crimes. So you know, these cold case detectives would like nothing better than to have this fugitive caught, and they're thrilled to work with us as well. And weaved throughout, you know, the actual cold cases are more current kind of everyday crimes. And actually, there was a recent capture not too long ago from the relaunch of the show. Tell me about that. Yeah, just three days after our very first show aired, we caught our very first fugitive, which was amazing, um, faster than we even um, hoped for. And yes, a lot of these we have these crime blotters throughout the show, which are things that are happening right now in different communities all over the country where people have committed crimes and need to be caught. And we've seen this work in other cases. I mean, we see it happen. You know, the NYPD is very good at using social media and posting like screenshots of um, somebody who's committed a crime and, and saying, have you seen this guy? Let us know. So local jurisdictions are already using social media to great effect to help catch people. We can do this now on a national level so that somebody, we, we increase the pool of possibilities, in other words, um, to help catch these people who've committed everything from carjackings to purse snatchings to hate crimes. Um, we have it all. I think of a show like this and then recently on Netflix, um, you know, Unsolved Mysteries kind of underwent a reboot. Why do you think people connect to shows like this still? You know, I've gotten so many tweets from people who say, I used to watch America's Most Wanted every Saturday night growing up with my mom and dad. I mean, it, it, it was the biggest hit on Fox television you know, ever <laughs> uh, at, at the time. So this is um, a lot of people watched this show over 25 years and have fond memories of it. And I think that's why it has such power today. I mean, there is not just the capacity to give our audience members a chance to actually change the world, but the fact that this lived in so many households for so many years um, and has a, people have great memories of it. I did wanna ask you about your memoir um, called Between Breaths, a memoir of panic and addiction. People right now are going through so many different things. We have a pandemic, social justice issues. What is your advice to help people through what has been a heavy year and continues to be? It has been a heavy year. Um, and we know, um, according to all sort of statistics from doctors and mental health experts, that we have had, um, in addition to you know, the coronavirus, a mental health uh, crisis going on in this country. Um, we know that the numbers of, um, you know, overdoses and alcohol poisonings is up. People are, and we know anxiety and depression are up. Um, it's important right now, I think, to, um, to understand that you're not alone and you're not the only person feeling anxious and depressed. You're not the only person self-medicating, perhaps, to get through this very, very difficult time. But... Um, there is help and, you're, and, and other people feel the same way and you don't have to self-medicate with substances that could you know, lead you down a dangerous path. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Partnership to End Addiction and we're just seeing you know, astonishingly high numbers of calls for help come in and good for them for, for reaching out for help because that's what people need to do right now. It's so, you know, the whole key to recovery um, to recovery from any kind of mental health crisis or mental health issue is connection. And in this pandemic, connection has really suffered. People are isolated. And it's, you know, it's very difficult to be in a room, you know, with other people sharing uh, stories of similar struggles when we're all on Zoom and we're all restricted to our own homes. So it's important for people to reach out and find a way to reach out and to know you're not alone. You know, you're not the only person feeling that way. Yeah, that's definitely the biggest takeaway. Listen, I appreciate your time so much. America's Most Wanted, Monday nights, nine o'clock on Fox. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lauren.